Hi everyone, I'm Manny Varela, Business Relationship Manager at DevOps Institute. Welcome and thank you for joining the Continuous Delivery Architecture Ask the Author webinar with Mark Hornbeek and Jane Grohl. The new Continuous Delivery Architecture course is part of the DevOps Practitioner series of courses. A Continuous Delivery Architect is a tool agnostic individual engaged in the design, implementation, and management of the DevOps deployment pipelines and tool chains that support continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous testing, and potentially continuous deployment. To assist uh, Mark and Jane in uh, uh, understanding the demographics of today's audience, we've compiled a few questions for a quick poll. And I will begin the poll now. First question for today, how mature is your continuous delivery pipeline? And I'll give you 15 seconds to answer. Mature, somewhat mature, just getting started, not sure. And we will end the poll in five, four, three, two, one. And I'll close the poll. So Mark and Jane, uh, looks like we've got uh, quite a few that are getting started. Uh, somewhat mature, a close second. And uh, mature, and there's a few that are not sure. Thank you for that. And uh, we'll move on to the next question. And your second question for today. Have you read the book Continuous Delivery by Jez Humble and David Farley? And I'll give you 15 seconds to answer yes, no, or maybe. And we'll close it out in five, four, three, two, one. And it looks like the majority is no, 17% yes. Thank you for your answers. And I will now submit the third question of the day. Do you have sufficient information and knowledge to architect a continuous delivery pipeline? 15 seconds to answer yes, no, or maybe. And we'll close it out in five, four, three, two, and one. So it looks like the majority, uh, at least half, is a, a no and a good deal of maybe and a few yeses. So thank you for your answers there. And uh, we'll close that out and back to the screen. So thank you for uh, again for, uh, for joining today. Next uh, slide. Mark, can you uh, advance the next slide, please? There we go. So today's agenda, uh, what is continuous delivery architecture? Uh, we will be introducing uh, some information, including or, uh, introducing the uh, CDA course and the examination. And then at the end, we'll have an ask the author uh, questions. We can actually ask Mark uh, uh, some things you might want to know. Please use the question tab uh, to ask your questions, if you will. Next slide. So about the DevOps Institute, uh, we are a con continuous learning community uh, for emerging DevOps practices. We launched about uh, you know, two and a half, three years ago. and. Uh, our training content and certification are delivered worldwide through a global channel of registered education partners. And our exclusive partner uh, for examinations is PeopleCert, a recognized global leader uh, in the industry for examinations and certifications. 
Next slide, please. So about the author, Mark Hornbeek uh, has 41 years of experience in architecting, design, developing, and managing high-performance solutions. He is a board member and a corporate executive, CTO, general manager, held many positions in the professional space. Uh, he currently uh, uh, works with Trace3 and uh, is an innovative leader uh, uh, and has successfully uh, done quite a bit of automation. He's a regular speaker and blogger, author of uh, two of DevOps Institute's courses, Continuous Delivery Architect and DevOps uh, Test Engineering. And a uh, 41-year member of the IEEE uh, Membership uh, Association, and just recently was awarded uh, the 2016 Most Outstanding Engineer by the uh, IEEE Region 6. So has uh, quite a bit of experience and uh, has been a wonderful author for the uh, Institute. And uh, he will be uh, delivering some information today on continuous delivery architecture. And without further ado, I wanna go ahead and turn it over to Mark uh, to take it forward. Mark, how you doing today? Hey, Manny, thank you. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you great. Thank you. Hey, I, I just want to uh, take the opportunity to thank uh, you and the DevOps Institute for the opportunity to help with this course uh, and also the webinar. Uh, I think the topic is something that's near and dear to my heart, and I believe it's increasingly important in this business world of you know, DevOps and accelerating uh, innovation uh, with quality. Uh, for some reason, I am having trouble advancing the slide. I'm not sure why. Hold on. There we go. So, you know, obviously the topic is continuous delivery architecture. I'm pretty uh, enthusiastic about the fact that the way the polls went, it seems like a pretty good audience here. So uh, welcome everybody. Uh, I think you're, those that are just getting started with continuous delivery, you're not alone. I certainly go into a lot of different enterprise uh, enterprises that are trying to get started and they're struggling to figure out where to start with continuous delivery and DevOps. Uh, I was a little surprised that a lot of you haven't read uh, Jez Humble's uh, book, Continuous Delivery, because that's a really good reference that I certainly recommend people do read. And um, yeah, I'm not that surprised that people are feeling they don't have enough information to implement continuous delivery because it's you know, it's not a trivial thing to do. Uh, I mean, one of the first places to start is to try to understand, if you like, the differences between DevOps and continuous delivery, uh, which is a subtlety I think a lot of folks don't completely get. Uh, you know, Gene Kim talks about DevOps. It's primarily, a, you know, the cultural aspects of, of, um, of the whole DevOps movement where you have you know, lean methods uh, being applied uh, of, you know, the three ways of flow and feedback and then kind of optimization. Um, and certainly that's critical to, to getting DevOps working. But, you know, beyond the culture, there's a lot of mechanisms and mechanics and processes, tools, technology that all have to, you know, work together uh, to support those people um, to, to really accomplish the goals of DevOps, and we'll talk more about that in this uh, session, and certainly the course goes into it in quite a lot of detail, it's kind of the how to approach continuous delivery to support DevOps initiatives. Uh, but fundamentally, you know, continuous delivery um, is, is in support of DevOps, and it's really the mechanisms underneath that make DevOps really uh, perform and accomplish the goals of DevOps. So what is continuous delivery? I mean, the definition that you'll see uh, by Jez, I think is a pretty good one. Uh, you, like DevOps, there's not really uh, any you know, formal definition that everybody 100% agrees to, but this definition by Jez, I think is pretty good. You know, the ability to get changes, whether those changes are features or you know, uh, metadata associated with those changes, configuration, you know, bug fixes, anything that you know you're trying to push through from uh, creation through to deployment into production uh, or any to get those changes into the hands of users and do it safely you know not just pump out lots of changes but do it in a way that 
um, it will be secure and safe and be able to uh, work in a sustainable way. Um, so, you know, again, the book Continuous Delivery is really the heart and soul of this course. Uh, at least half of the material is in the course is based on the Continuous Delivery Handbook by Jess and David Farley. Uh, you can find more about it on the YouTube link that's provided there. Um, there's a lot of other information, you know, besides the book also in the course uh, that I'll talk about. So how does continuous delivery architecture uh, differ from traditional approaches, uh, meaning, you know, other software uh, methodologies and processes and, and uh, structures to deliver software? Uh, there, there are some key differentiators that really, you know, underscore, if you like, the key tenets of continuous delivery. First of all, you really you can't accomplish continuous delivery without having a completely integrated infrastructure. You can't have disconnected processes. They have to be all interconnected and integrated together from from you know code creation, uh, implementation, you know, builds and packaging packaging for delivery and deployment and and all this all the um, accomplishing supporting capabilities, the tests and the you know. Uh, metadata that go with it uh, have to work all together and be integrated together. Uh, in order to do that, uh, it's not just a matter of you know coupling together tools, but you actually have to orchestrate the environment itself as well. Uh, I don't think too many companies could afford to have you know complete, separate, 100% uh, built up capability at every stage in a continuous delivery pipeline. Instead, what you do is you orchestrate the environment could be cloud, it could be private data center, whatever it is, but the, the systems and services that are involved in the integrated uh, infrastructure and uh, pipeline uh, are orchestrated so that you deploy resources on an as on demand as needed basis and therefore it's shared across the entire team and across the enterprise as much as possible. And that's a way to actually be able to afford you know the whole the whole set of orchestrated systems, um, and be able to still have it done efficiently. Uh, automation is key. I mean, I don't think everybody fully understands the difference between automation and orchestration, but um, basically, you know, orchestration is setting up the environment and tearing down the environment, if you like, for automation. Well, once it's set up, then you can automate tasks. So whether it's tests or whether it's builds or you know monitoring or, or or whatever you know d deployment processes uh anything that is push button and um you know run without human intervention basically uh once the or once the environment is set up is is automation so with uh, continuous delivery everything is automated as much as possible you're trying to get to the point where a change goes into the front of the pipeline and it can come out the back end without any human intervention at all including you know an analysis and decision making uh, I think another key differentiator is the you know continuous emphasis if you like or uh, on accelerating uh, lead times so uh, you know with DevOps and continuous delivery the intent is to be able to deliver a change as quickly as possible through the pipeline so constantly looking for those bottlenecks where you can reduce that lead time is is a key goal and the best practices and processes and techniques for doing that is part of the continuous delivery architecture and part of the continuous delivery architect architects you know uh, skill set and interest to be able to figure out how to continuously accelerate so that things can be done faster and faster but at the same time safely and you know with high quality uh, you know, as I mentioned, DevOps and continuous delivery are really not the same thing. They support each other. DevOps, uh, they support each other in, in terms of the business goals they're, they're um, trying to accomplish. Uh, continuous delivery is really a set of interconnected, integrated processes and uh, methodologies and tools. So continuous integration, uh, management of changes, uh, testing changes, uh, the fact that these have to be, you know, consistent and reliable, repeatable, and automated, uh, operate on 
small iterations as much as possible, but you know sometimes there are bigger iterations as well. So scaling vertical, horizontal, whatever is needed uh, to be able to accommodate the you know the ups and downs in the pipeline, and to be able to do that you know, in very fast feedback loops, so you get a lot of information as as changes are going through the pipeline. So it's all about you know the mechanisms. Continuous delivery is really about the mechanisms behind DevOps. Where DevOps itself is more of a journey. Uh, it emphasizes engineering delivery principles, and you know encourages organizations to really break down their organizational silos, uh, take a, a broad look at how value is propagated through the organization and uh, map out um, the delivery pipeline so that it can be optimized bottlenecks and uh, areas where there are uh, weaknesses in the pipeline can be optimized. Uh, so basically, you know, in a nutshell, continuous delivery is the process while DevOps is a bigger cultural shift and together that's what um, you know allows organizations to get the value out of DevOps continuous delivery that they're looking for. So what are the values? Uh, if you guys are not familiar with this report, it's really important. Uh, Puppet Labs publishes a report every June called the State of the DevOps Report. Actually there's a new one out uh, this year and um, it basically talks about the primary business values of DevOps and, and accomplishments that the best in class DevOps organizations are you know, achieving. Um, and there's pretty re remarkable. There's 20, if you break it down, there's 20, if you like values in that report and it organized in six categories. So agility, I think most folks think about DevOps as like, hey, we need to do things faster and more frequently. And indeed, you know, the speed is remarkable when you do DevOps right and you get the pipeline and continues to be right that the best in class organizations are getting, you know, hundreds of percentages of improvement compared to those that are not. And of course, stability as well. People want quality and stability and you don't want to just go faster. It's kind of useless and dangerous if you don't have, you know, a stable environment and high quality environment. Um, so, you know, again 24 times faster you know higher stability uh are, is, can be accomplished and is being accomplished by some of the best in class organizations efficiency um you know you could throw a lot of money at a problem and maybe you can get agility and stability but you know nobody's going to want to do that unless they have an infinite amount of money which nobody does so efficiency is important uh efficiency in a number of ways certainly labor efficiency you know people want to spend less time on unplanned work so you get to do, do DevOps and continuous delivery right, that, that happens in a big way. Even on resources, um, you know, the slide doesn't say it, but uh, you can get a lot more efficient use out of using elastic on-demand infrastructures and tooling than having dedicated resources for every process. Now, security, uh, ironically, uh, you know, has improved as well. A lot of folks are worried that, you know, security would take a back seat or audits and things with DevOps because of the speed. Uh, and there's a whole genre of, of uh, DevOps called DevSecOps that continuous delivery is a big part of as well, uh, where how you integrate all the security practices and processes and tooling and technology uh, in line with the continuous delivery pipeline. So when that's done right, you also get a pretty nice bump improvement, um, even employee satisfaction. You know, nobody wants to be on pager duty every weekend for the rest of their lives. Uh, so DevOps does give back time when it is done right. Uh, if it's not done right, then yeah, it can actually exacerbate the problem. And I've seen a lot of organizations where, you know, they're not getting satisfaction, but uh, if it is done right, indeed, you do get, you know, the ability to uh, get some time back for um, employees tend to feel they're working for a more productive, modern, uh, satisfactory environment. And finally, quality um, to be able to reduce the number of defects that are hitting the field that are causing failures um, by building in all the quality checks throughout the pipeline rather than like the old waterfall model uh, running problems at the end and you have to you know they tend to get pushed out because you don't have time to go back to the beginning to fix them but with DevOps and continuous delivery quality is addressed as you go along and constantly prioritize so the end result is is higher quality rather than lower quality even at speed you know if you think about all this it almost seems magical right how do you get you know better quality more 
reliability, stability, security. There's a trick to that, right? And, and so I'm not surprised when people say, you know, I'm not really sure how to do this. It's not easy. It, getting started, there's lots of false starts if you don't know how to do it and can be expensive in terms of time, money, and just frustration and uh, calendar time to get it right. So I think this is where this course can hopefully help a lot of people get started on the right track, find out what the right skills are, what the best practices are, for being able to accomplish all this. There's a lot of uh, different things that need to be pulled together, uh, things to understand. It's certainly not impossible. You know, lots of folks are doing it as this chart indicates, but they're doing it because they've learned how to do it. And, uh, you know, not everybody has to start from the beginning. If you take a course, then you're gonna get um, some value out of being able to start on a fast start and get it right the first time as much as possible. Um, Jane, I know you've got a few words to say about the course itself, so I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Mark, and, and thanks for really helping our audience today understand more about not only just continuous delivery, but I think the difference between continuous delivery and DevOps is, is critical. Um, sometimes they are perceived to be the same, and the skills and the competencies associated with uh, orchestrating and architecting for continuous delivery is very specific and included in this course. So hi everyone, I'm Jane Grohl, I'm CEO of the DevOps Institute. I'm just going to take a couple of minutes before we open up the Q&A with Mark to tell you a little bit about the continuous delivery architect uh, architecture course. You see the, the nice badge that's on your screen right now. Um, candidates that successfully pass the continuous delivery architecture exam actually become designated as continuous delivery architects. So keep that in mind as I'm going. Mark, would you advance to the next slide, please? So the CDA or Continuous Delivery Architecture course is part of DevOps Institute's portfolio of DevOps Practitioner uh, series. So each of the DevOps Practitioner courses is specific to a competency. So we recently introduced DevOps Test Engineering, uh, very recently DevOps Leader, and now Continuous Delivery Architecture. So this course is part of our DevOps Practitioner Series. It is intended to be a 16-hour course. Uh, it is delivered globally by our Channel of Registered Education partners, and it is about creating a continuous delivery culture, including the new and, and innovative ways to architect and orchestrate not only automation, but people and process as well. As Mark said, you need to be able to have an integrated infrastructure, and that includes some of the processes and some of the shift left mentalities uh, and activities that have become a, a key part of DevOps. The course is accredited and built by the DevOps Institute. As I said, it's delivered through our channel of registered education partners worldwide. The exam itself is managed by our strategic partner, PeopleCert, and the exam is 90 minutes. It is 40 multiple choice questions, and you need to achieve 65% in passing. It's very important to note that for each of the DevOps practitioner courses, and this one in particular, DevOps Foundation certification is required in order to sit the continuous delivery architecture exam. It's important to understand the value of prerequisites. I know that there are some that are that question why that's so. You know, DevOps Foundation is a great exposure to many concepts and many practices that are emerging in DevOps. And so by, uh, by having that foundational knowledge, first of all, you enter into a practitioner or an advanced course understanding systems thinking, understanding how DevOps aligns with other frameworks like Agile or Lean or IT service management. It gives you a broad understanding of key practices that support or underpin um, practices like continuous delivery architecture. So DevOps Foundation is a prerequisite for this exam. You must hold that certification. And of course, DevOps Foundation is available through your registered education uh, partners. Next slide, please. So why is this course important? Well, we know that, that with the introduction of DevOps, continuous delivery, agile, and other uh, new and disruptive practices, 
competencies for the multidimensional IT professional are growing as well. And so this is an important competency as the polls indicated at the beginning, many of you have started down that path. Many of you are just starting down that path and, and uh, many of you are saying you don't necessarily have yet the right information and the, uh, the right skills in order to be able to architect and orchestrate effectively and efficiency, efficiently. And so this course will give you that. It is tool agnostic. It is built on the best practices of continuous integration, continuous delivery, uh, automated testing, and um, at some point continuous deployment. It is built, as Mark said, and we'll talk a little bit about that, uh, with uh, the core knowledge coming out of the Jez Humble, Dave Farley continuous delivery book and video series, but also supplemented with concepts like microservices and containers that have been, that have emerged since then. It's not only about automation, right? I mean, I spend a lot of time at conferences. Mark spends a lot of time at conferences. And, and the myth that DevOps is mostly about how you automate a pipeline um, is is truly a myth, right? You can you can introduce as much automation as possible, but there are other factors that are critical to your success and are built into the ability to successfully architect uh, continuous delivery in your organization. Frankly, there are limited opportunities to learn about continuous delivery outside of tools. And so the knowledge that an attendee would gain in this course really can be applied to any set of tools, any, any tool chain that's built based on the, the, you know, the kind of recipes of, of tools out there. And frankly, is supported by many of the tool providers because it does provide the practices and the principles behind sound continuous delivery that then can be applied to the actual orchestration and architecture of the, of the, of the pipelines. Next slide, please. So again, I'm not gonna go through each of these in great detail, but if you look at what you'll learn in this course, again, there is a lot. It's a very, very detailed course. Mark has done an exceptional job of really taking what started out uh, with Jess Humble's book, um, and then Chez did a video series for Pearson Learning. We've partnered with Pearson to provide each of the attendees to this course uh, a copy of the book, but also access to the six hour video series. So as a, as a key part of the learning here, but then adding on top of it, design practices, microservices, uh, a broad understanding of continuous integration, really kind of taking uh, what we've done in, uh, uh, test engineering and bringing that in as a critical success factor here as well. Understanding tools, but also understanding the relationship of security and monitoring and other elements that, that really feed into continuous delivery as a practice. Next slide, please. So as I alluded to before, this course was built um, on with multiple layers. So Mark is our lead author. We're very honored to work with him. Um, we also partnered with Pearson, the world's learning company. Uh, Pearson is the publisher of Jez Humble and Dave Farley's continuous delivery book and also uh, worked with Jez on a continuous delivery video series where you get to hear from Jez himself on many of the practices that, um, that really uh, form the foundation of continuous delivery. So the course was built in partnership with Pearson. As I said before, every learner will get access to a digital version of the book and uh, access codes for, uh, for the video series to be able to support the instructor's uh, delivery of the course. But on top of that, Mark's done a really good job of also looking at additional sources of reference, of looking at emerging practice, Practices I mentioned before about containers, uh, microservices, really starting to look at, okay, since this book was written and since continuous delivery emerged um, as part of the DevOps spe spectrum, what else has, has been introduced to either make it easier for you to architect, make it, um, you know, more powerful, um, you know, looking at, at some of the, the tool categories and really building on top of what does a successful continuous delivery program look like? Very, very comprehensive course. It's a lot of information that's covered in those 16 hours, but it is very holistic um, and very well-rounded. Next slide, please.
So with all things that the DevOps does, we are uh, curating the collective body of knowledge around DevOps. Uh, there isn't a single body of knowledge. We support that. We think that uh, within DevOps, there are so many resources that provide great practices, some of which integrate with existing frameworks like Agile or Lean, some of which are new practices like continuous delivery um, or immersion learning. So. Uh, the, the collective body of knowledge is growing on a regular basis. It not only includes books, but also conferences and blogs and articles and other content resources uh, that are available to the continuous learning community. For this course, Mark, next slide, please. For this course, these are some of the other resources uh, that were used to supplement uh, the continuous delivery publication and video series. And so you can see it really crosses um, a, a pretty wide spectrum of, of uh, content and, and uh, insight into how to bring continuous delivery alive. So again, the course is really well-rounded. It does take a 360 degree view of continuous delivery and is really built on some great thought leadership, not only from Mark, and Mark's a great thought leader, but also Mark's ability to tap into other resources as well. Next slide, please. So is this course right for you? Well, again, if you're one of the roles that are listed in this on this slide, you know, pretty much anyone that's interested in learning more about the principles and the practices behind continuous integration and delivery. It is a little bit more technical than uh, perhaps some of the courses. Again, very tool agnostic, but um, it does dive deeper into the prescriptive guidance around, uh, around the architecture and the orchestration of continuous delivery. Um, so if you look at most of the roles, but you know, some of these roles are not specific to just release engineers or not specific just to uh, developers. I mean, if you look at it, it's a pretty well-rounded list. Project managers, security professionals, QA uh, professionals, uh, developers, right? Operational and infrastructure folks. So it is also a great way to kind of connect and collaborate uh, between dev and ops so that, you know, we're all learning the same thing and we're starting to understand, uh, you know, similar concepts, similar vocabulary, similar principles behind that. So if you're interested in learning more about continuous delivery, you're hearing about it in conferences or you're reading about it um, in blogs or books, this is a great course for that. Next slide, please. So the course will be available in September of 2017. What we're doing at DevOps Institute now is gearing up our registered education partners, making sure that the instructors um, have gone through their own process of preparation and, um, and study and, and ensuring that the reps have everything that they need to deliver a quality learner experience across the globe. So if you're interested in this course, please reach out to your registered education partner. They'll start publishing schedules and logistics for, uh, for their courses. Um, if you need to find a registered education partner, please come to www.devopsinstitute.com and uh, look at our rec directory. Oh, and I forgot to say, if you pass the course, you get this really nice digital badge. So, it, <laughs> thanks, Mark. So, as you know, as I said, um, continuous delivery architect is one of the competencies in DevOps Institute's DevOps Practitioner Series. Um, you know, unlike others, we've chosen to stay away from single course uh, generic designation. So, was, and in in our definition of a practitioner, practitioners have multi-dimensional competencies. Some competencies will be specific to a role. Some competencies. Uh, will be specific to multiple roles. And of course, the migration away from being specialist or I-shaped people and, and starting to move more towards multi-dimensional people that have, um, that have multiple competencies, this fits into it. So it is one of our practitioner competencies. Um, as I said, we've already released DevOps Test Engineering and DevOps Leader. Continuous Delivery Architect is the course we're talking about now. DevSecOps, really specific to security and DevOps, will be coming out um, in the fall. And um, next year, we expect a site reliability engineering course to emerge as well. So, you know, put these competencies together and an organization really gets 
um, a skilled, a highly skilled staff, but more than, than you know, they're, they're not new skills in some cases, some are evolving skills, um, but, you know, we've been doing a lot of research and, and I've identified these as competencies for the modern IT DevOps professional. Next slide, please. So we do hope you'll connect with us at, at DevOps Institute. We are the continuous learning community and as such, you know, certification and education is obviously a key part of our mission, but we'll be introducing new opportunities for the community to engage going forward. And so stay in touch with us, become a part of our community. Uh, this course is a great course. Uh, again, very honored to have worked with Mark. Mark's done a great job of it. Uh, so with that, Manny, I'm going to turn it back to you and hopefully um, some of our attendees have some great questions for Mark. Uh, we do have a couple of questions and please, uh, if you have some more, uh, please uh, solicit them uh, via the questions uh, tab. And uh, I have a couple here for you. Uh, Mark, uh, what skills are required to become a continuous delivery architect? Thanks for the question. Uh, skills. So, yeah, as you can probably guess from the presentation we just went through, there's a broad range of, of things uh, that this course teaches and help. You know, there's some underlying expectations that you have a fundamental understanding of DevOps of so the DevOps Foundation course. Learning is, is if you like, a skill. But um, beyond that, it's trying to understand, you know, the difference between the different tools and technology and how to stitch together a pipeline. Uh, so there's some system level skills. People need to have an affinity for that. Um, they don't have to be hands-on necessarily, but they have to have a good, you know, grasp of the concepts uh, in order to succeed with architecting a DevOps pipeline. A lot of the, the architect isn't necessarily the person that literally you know, does all of the work to make it work, but they certainly need to have a good understanding of, you know, what components in an architecture are good or not and how to select those components and then be able to direct how to put it all together. Uh, understanding the, an application itself and how applications are architected. One of the things that Jez talks about and others, um, you know, Martin Fowler and some of the experts, um, the, real trick to, to really getting proper acceleration through the pipeline is um, taking an application and breaking it into microservices or at least you know reconfigurable incremental changes so that you can process them as much as possible in parallel or or just the parts that are changing if you can make them independent um, but so understanding architecture is also a skill again you don't have to necessarily be the one writing the code for the application but certainly understanding how to do that and, and, and being able to um, direct others um, to, to best practices. And um, the, there's a whole range of things and, you know, development and test and deployment. So being open to learning about those things. There aren't that many people that know the whole spectrum of, of um, you know, software development and delivery, all the underlying tools and methods, um, but being comfortable with learning about it and talking about it and uh, researching and keeping your eyes open for ongoing changes. Somebody that has an affinity for that is, is a skill. And, and, and in general, people skills, right? Because you're dealing with a lot of people. Uh, nobody knows it all. So the architect does, have, does need to have some, you know, a skill, if you like, for working with people uh, at different stages in the pipeline and helping them figure out how to pull their parts of the process into the pipeline. Those are some of the skills I would think about. Great, thank you, Mark. Uh, great answer. Um, got another question here. As this is a rapidly changing and growing area, will the certification expire and need to be upgraded for new concepts? The certification, me, okay, go ahead, Jane. I was gonna say, let me take that. So the certification will never expire. Uh, but you know, as, as our, our uh, mission really implies we are the continuous learning community. So, you know, part of our role in the community is to provide continuous learning opportunities. So um, we have no intention right now of expiring certifications. Again, uh, we recognize that that practices are emerging on a very rapid basis and it's our responsibility 
to provide our learning uh, our learning community with continuous learning opportunities. And some of those could be events or webinars or assets and, uh, you know, being a part of our community really, I think, entitles uh, individuals to, to be supported with those types of continuous learning opportunities. Okay, great, great answer. Thank you, Jane. And uh, Mark or Jane, is it necessary to have uh, hands-on experience or development experience uh, before enrolling into the, uh, a course like this? Can a guy with uh, BAW or BAU uh, uh, get uh, value from this framework? So I can take that one. Yeah, definitely. It's certainly okay to take it, even if you don't have a lot of hands-on experience, as long as you have a strong interest in, you know, the message methods and processes associated with continuous delivery, you're going to learn something. Uh, there's not a lot of hands-on exercises in this course. That's part of the way, you know, it will stay relevant for a longer time as well. If the course was to dive too deep into specific tools, and indeed, you know, the next version of the tool, the course is obsolete. But because the course is really focused on best practices and, you know, fundamental concepts and approaches to put together a pipeline and uh, you know, it ha it's going to have long-standing relevance, and it's also going to be relevant for folks that are maybe not so hands-on, but at the <laughs> same time, it's relevant for people that are hands-on because, you know, those practices are, are you know, they'll help you save a lot of time if you follow them when you're implementing something. Uh, and, and I think that one of the, the benefits of being tool agnostic, and as I said, you know, we're supported by the tool community. We've been part of DevOps Express and had a great opportunity to interact with many in the tool space. But, you know, the principles and practices likely um, stand, um, you know, longer than uh, the tools and the, um, and the actual technology, right? So, you know, the principles behind continuous delivery, pretty sound. Um, so the expectation is, is is that while they are changing, you know, the, your core guidance will likely remain the same. You'll just have to adopt and adapt it. Okay, fantastic. And Mark and uh, Jane, if, if one is a current trainer and wants to do uh, CDA training, is there a lot of it technical experience required uh, for, for training? Uh, well, uh, I can take that. Go ahead, Mark. If, if you want to take training um, or, or you want to become a trainer, I'm not sure what the question was. Yes, yes. If you potentially, if you're a current trainer and potentially want to do training, is a, would it, is a trainer required to have a lot of experience, uh, technical experience? So let me, let me answer that from a DOI perspective and then Mark jump in with, you know, qualifications you think that would make a good trainer. So you know, all trainers want to be able to bring material to life. So having experience in a particular domain um, makes you a good trainer because you're not only just uh, delivering the content, you're, you're bringing in real life experience. Some of that may be your real life experience, some of it may be experience that you've had with other learners or with other customers. So, you know, that's key as well. The, the key criteria for becoming a trainer is, first of all, you must be a Dev, approved DevOps Foundation instructor, but you also need to self-study and pass this exam. Um, and so, um, so those two put together, coupled with um, your experience, which, you know, obviously is vetted through PeopleServe, um, helps us ensure that, you know, the highest quality instructors are delivering the material. Whether you are a developer, an operations person, I think that's an it depends. Um, I'm gonna let Mark kind of share with us who he thinks, you know, what are the qualifications for a great trainer for this. It is more technical than some of the other courses in terms of the concepts, but not in terms of the tooling. So um, there, you know, there isn't a lab, there isn't a, um, you know, a hands-on, go ahead and build a pipeline uh, you know, you know, here's five tools, go ahead and, you know, build APIs to, to be able to put those together. But understanding the technology, I think, is very, very critical. Mark, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, you don't have to be someone that, you know, is writing code every day to learn how to teach this course, certainly. Uh, there's a lot of train-the-trainer information available as well. I think it's just important to understand the concepts of software development and delivery and it's DevOps and just be a good, you know, obviously somebody that was open to learning the whole 
spectrum of things in the course um, and just to be a good teacher. <laughs> so I, I don't think you have to be super technical. I mean, clearly you have to have some underlying understanding of concepts of, of you know, software development and delivery that, that that's helpful, or at least some, at least one end of this of the pipeline before you get started anyways. Okay, and, and, and then Mark, go from there. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, along those lines, uh, how would you measure uh, the success of a continuous delivery architect? Yeah, so fundamentally, I think the the one of the architect's jobs actually is to help define metrics for the pipeline. And so if, the, if those metrics are being accomplished, presumably the pipeline is good and the architect did his job. So that's probably the main measure. And the business goals that we talked about in the presentation from the state of the DevOps report would be the sort of things that the business is looking for and if those metrics are in a positive direction, presumably the architect, you know, gets some credit for that. Um, you know, the, those are the big picture ways of measuring it on the on the maybe smaller level or more near near term level, because um, those things may take months to accomplish sometimes, if not years, to get you know the full benefit. But uh, just day to day seeing things that were not automated or not orchestrated getting done um, and tasks that were taking longer, you know, on a, on a even on a, within the pipeline, getting done faster w would be some examples of how you could measure success. Okay, fantastic. Uh, great question. And uh, is continuous delivery architect a separate role in, a, in an enterprise? Uh, can be. I've seen enterprises where there are multiple architects collaborating uh, on different aspects. You may have an architect for, you know, different parts of of the system. Somebody that's really responsible for, let's say, security is not unusual at all. Maybe somebody that's responsible for the testing or design end or delivery end. But so it's either you know one person doing all of that, uh, or there's a you know group of people that have some responsibility to work together. It can be their day job, or it could be just part of the job. So it's not, it, in effect, it's it is a role, uh, but it's not necessarily you know a full time job. If you, if you see what I mean, it can be decided by the individual organization what makes sense depending on the complexity of the pipeline, and um, you know the enterprise and the application. And and Mark, I have a follow on question about that that I think I'm hoping others are thinking about as well. So. You know, organizations, you know, given their their scope and their reach, likely don't have just one team that is, you know, or one pipeline. You know, I, I would expect that there are, you know, pipelines in multiple business units, multiple geographical regions for multiple products or different products. Is that true? Well, yeah, uh, certainly larger enterprises have, I have seen lots of them that have you know, tens of pipelines. It's even more and more true along with, as microservices are coming along because in effect, every single microservice, if you break up an application into multiple microservices, every one of them is a pipeline. So often you'll have one architect or a small group of architects dealing with an application and all the different microservices for that application. But if you cross, you know, let's say business units or applications, then there may be different folks involved. But, you know, I like to use a, actually a Cherokee word, uh, taliqua, uh, when for these circumstances, which means two is just enough. Uh, <laughs> you know, you don't want to have too many because it's redundant and you trip over each other. But if you only have one, then maybe it's, you know, there's no way to leverage each other, uh, whether that's a tool or technology or people even. Um, so I think, you know, having a couple of folks involved is usually a good thing. Uh, having too many, can, can you, you start tripping over each other. And the same is true for you know different types of pipelines. You want to try to get some efficiency of scale, economy of scale, by not having too many different types of technologies and tools available in the different pipelines across the enterprise, but you know not just one either. Well, and I think that's one of the reasons a course like this is particularly important because, uh, again, you may have you know we always kind of portray it as if organizations have a single pipeline. And the reality is, you're right, large organizations may have tens of pipelines, um, but if everyone has a shared understanding of the, 
you know, best practice principles and processes that, you know, sit behind uh, architecting a continuous delivery pipeline, then there are, you know, I don't want to use the word standards in the traditional sense, but there are, you know, norms that go within an organization uh, for being able to do this so you don't bump into each other or you don't have, you know, disparate uh, disparate or conflicting pipelines. But yeah, sometimes it, 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 you know, we always portray it as if it's, you know, you have one pipeline for, you know, a, a, a giant enterprise. Okay, fantastic. And uh, I believe that's probably all the questions we have time for today. Uh, please keep in mind that uh, we are recording this uh, session, so uh, we will be uh, delivering an email with a link to the recorded session uh, within a few days. Uh, so keep a look at that, uh, look out for that uh, in your emails. Um, and if anyone uh, is uh, interested in becoming a, a registered education partner for the DevOps Institute, please contact me at manny at devopsinstitute.com. Thank you, Mark, uh, for a great presentation, and Jane as well. Uh, keep a lookout for the uh, CDA course coming to you soon. And of course, uh, as Jane mentioned, you can search on our website. Uh, you know, in about 30 days, you could see uh, you know, some reps uh, begin to, uh, to uh, be authorized to uh, deliver the CDA courses, and uh, it will begin to uh, develop their class schedules. So with that, I'd like to wrap it up and thank everyone uh, for their participation today. And uh, we will see you next time. Have a great day. And Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Manny. Thanks, Mark. Have a great day, everyone. All right.